Okay, day five, guys. We're almost there. Today, pretty tricky. We're going to talk about choosing a Medigap or a Medicare supplement plan. And uh, there are 10 different lettered Medicare supplement plans. Remember, they're standardized, so they're the same. If you compare letter N to N, same identical benefits, only difference is monthly premium. Same with G, same with F. So what we're going to do, I've, you know, I've kind of made life easy for you. Out of those 10, there's only three that are that stand above so much above the rest of these old outdated plans. So looking for a Medigap policy, the number one thing you want to look at is rate instability. I've got tons of different software programs that help me with that. So, all right, hold on and enjoy. Choose a Medigap or Medicare supplement company. We're going to look at, there's a, there's a multitude of different Medigap or Medicare supplements that you can choose from. Right here, you can see the chart. Right here, you can see the Medigap or Medicare supplement plan comparison. Out of these 10 lettered plans, we're going to look at the best three. We're going to look at the plan F, the plan G, and the plan N. So what I'm also going to do for you is I'm going to tell you which one of these three top plans I like the best, which one I like the least. you got to remember is when choosing a Medigap uh, or a Medicare supplement plan, the number one factor is rate stability and there's a science to finding the company the medicare supplement plan letter and the company that's going to offer you the mo most rate stability and that's what my job is is your agent is to do all right so the first plan that we're going to look at and it was by far the most popular plan up until january 1st of 2020 and i'm going to talk talk about that in a minute but the plan f the plan f is the most comprehensive plan in fact, if you got your original Medicare card and you have a Plan F Medicare supplement, you actually never have a bill. Besides your drug costs, you go to the hospital and have surgery, no bill. You get outpatient surgery, specialist, doctor's visits. The Plan F, as you can see right here, pays everything. Pays your Part A and Part B deductibles, pays your co-insurance and, and hospital costs, your co-insurance and co-payments for Part B, Basically, if you have a plan F, you leave your checkbook at home. So today, would I, would I put anybody in the Medicare supplement plan F? No way. I haven't put anybody in a plan F since about 2017, and that was too late. I'm going to tell you why. So on January 1st of 2020, Medicare said, you know what? No more plan F. If you were 65 after January 1st of 2020... They said you can keep your plan F or you can even enroll and switch to a different company's plan F. Realize that with these plan, these supplements are standardized by Medicare. What does that mean? Just think, standardize the same. The Medicare supplement plan F that covers everything Medicare doesn't, Humana's plan F offers the identical benefits and coverage as a United Healthcare plan F. The only difference between United Healthcare's Plan F and Humana's Plan F is the monthly premium. All right, that's it. Otherwise, they're identical. So in 2020, they stopped offering the Plan F to people turning 65. So anybody turning 65, you can today, you cannot get the Plan F. Anybody that was after uh, was under 65, under 65 on January 1st of 2020. You can't get the Plan F, all right? And there's a, two reasons why I don't like the Plan F. Even if you have a Plan F right now, I would get off it as quickly as possible for, one, for two reasons. Number one, the Plan F has an older, sicker pool of people, and your insurance premiums and your rate increases are based on the number of claims in a year that people in that pool of people in your Plan F how many claims is going to determine how much they need to ra raise their, their rates. So with the Plan F, you have an older, sicker pool of people. People that really uh, went in the Plan F because it's got the most comprehensive coverage, and they're usually the sickest ones. So the sicker people gravitated towards the Plan F because they had, pre they had some issues when they turned 65, so they went into that. So that's why, the, that's one, number one, that's the first reason why I don't like the plan F. Think about it. Healthy, new to Medicare folks, the youngest of the young, 
they're not allowed in the Plan F anymore. So the only people that are, that are in the Plan F are the ones that are stuck in it that wanted that comprehensive coverage because they probably had some issues. All right? So that's the Plan F. We don't want it. Number two, the second reason why I cannot stand the Plan F is because for January 1st of 2020, the Plan F, that was the plan that took all your sick people. The Plan F was the plan that took all your sick people. What do I mean by that? So there are certain situations or certain Medicare protections people have where they can get a Medicare supplement even if they're on their deathbed. All right? They're called guaranteed issue right situations. All right, let me give you a few examples. Let's say you turn 65 and you decide to go with a Medicare Advantage plan. Three months later, you find out you got cancer. Well, you have what's called your Medicare trial right. You have 12 months from the time you turn 65. If you go in a Medicare Advantage plan, you have 12 months to go back into original Medicare and get a Medicare supplement with no underwriting, no health questions at all. And before January 1st of 2020, all these sick people that use their trial right, or let's say you lost your group or retiree coverage, AT&T in Texas, I think they downsize like, I'll give you an example of losing your group or your retiree coverage. A lot of folks at AT&T, hundreds of thousands of them that were retired on Medicare, they had great AT&T uh, retiree coverage that worked really well with their Medicare. Well, AT&T pulled the carpet underneath them and they lost that. So all those people have what's called a guaranteed right issue. They can get a Medicare supplement no matter how sick they are. They can get a Medicare supplement with no health questions asked. That's another example. Another example, quite often we run into folks that are on a Medicare Advantage plan. And guess what? That Medicare Advantage plan company decides we are not going to offer that plan next year in your area. Happens every year. When that happens, you get all these Medicare Advantage people, some of them who are really sick, that are tired of those copays. Hey, I, I get a free chance to get a Medicare supplement. Even though I'm 75 and I've got cancer and COPD, they are not offering that Medicare Advantage plan. And Medicare lets that person get a Medicare supplement, but not just any Medicare supplement. It used to be the Medicare plan F that everybody would go into uh, before January 1st of 2020. So those are the reasons why I don't like the Plan F. Now, you might be asking, well, what about after uh, January 1st of 2020? My job is to find a Medicare supplement with the least amount of rate instability. So let's throw the Plan F. Let's segue into the Plan G. Now, the Plan G is the most comprehensive Medicare supplement for people turning 65. Because remember, they can't get the Plan F anymore. If you weren't 65 on January 1st of 2020, you can't get the F, and the most comprehensive plan is the Plan G. So let's take a look at the benefits. Looks pretty darn similar to the Plan F. Pays everything except, boom, right here, your Medicare Part B deductible. For 2022, the Medicare Part B deductible is $233. So, I mean, the, the Plan G is almost as comprehensive as the F. Once you pay the $233 deductible, it's a Part B deductible, doctor's visits, outpatient, blood work, things like that. Once you pay $233, guess what? You never have a bill the rest of the year. You go to get MD Anderson to get cancer treatment for six weeks, three months, whatever. You, you pay your $233 deductible after that, pays all that cancer treatment, pays hospital stays, when you go to the specialist, you don't even have a copay. You go to the doctor, no copay. You, anything is no copay. Once you hit the 233 deductible, the Plan G turns into the Plan F. But, but remember I was telling you about the Plan F? And before January 1st of 2020, they were, the, they were the Medicare supplement plan that all those sick people that could, could leave their Advantage plans or go to a supplement went to or they lost their retiree coverage or they were on an Advantage plan when they turned 65, but eight months later they found out they had COPD. They have 12 months to uh, uh, get into a Medicare supplement with no health questions asked, all right? So instead of the Plan F, it's the Plan G that has to accept 
that has to accept those sick people. Okay, guys, before I bash the heck out of the Plan G and look you in the eyes and tell you if anybody's put you in the Plan G in the last three to four years, uh, the, this agent's either lazy and, and just wants, doesn't want to explain better options like the Plan N or they realize the Plan G premiums are more expensive than the, the less costly Plan N and they just throw you in there. But bottom line is this, the Plan G has always had more value than the Plan F. For years, I sold the Plan G back in 2015, 16, 17 because I'd explain to people, look, the Plan G and F are almost identical other than the Plan G has that little Part B deductible, which this year is 233, 233 annual deductible. Once you hit the 233, the Plan G pays everything. So basically what I told people years back was this. Look, the Plan G is right around $600 less a year in premium than the Plan F. Only difference is that 233 Part B deductible that you have to pay with the G. But let's face it. You subtract the 233 deductible from 600 and you're right around $400 in savings. So people that have the plan F, only it's more of a convenience thing. They basically would pay four or $500 extra a year in, in premium uh, just so they, didn't, they could have first dollar coverage and never have a 233 deductible. But I'm telling you right now, you got, if you're on the plan F, you got big problems. If you're on the Plan G and you're healthy, you need to get off, all right? Because here's the thing. As of January 1st of 2020, the Plan G, not the Plan F, must absorb the high cost of, of accepting folks on that use their guaranteed issue. Remember those little circumstances I told you about? People that lose their group coverage. Those sick people are now going to go to the Plan G because that's the only supplemental plan that they can go to. They can't go to the Plan N. The Plan F is no longer available. So the Plan G, they must, the Plan G, not the Plan F, must sell a supplement to folks sick with pre-existing conditions. They can't charge higher premiums because of past or present health issues. So you've got a huge pool of people that loses their Advantage plan. Uh, it leaves the area, or let's say they move, or let's say they lose their group coverage, or they use their trial right when they first go on Medicare to leave the Advantage plan and go back on a supplement. All those cases, all of those are going to go to the Plan G. We're already seeing the Plan G rate starting to go up, up, up. It's going to get dirt. It's going to get ugly. Okay, guys. So in conclusion, this is what I'm saying. As a result of MACRA, the 2020 law, Plan G is now available to customers with six or seven federal GI guaranteed issue rights for the first time. This is going to increase the portion of high-cost customers and place more and more pressure on insurers to raise premiums. In 2020, the pressure was low. There was only one year of newly eligible customers with federal guaranteed issue rights, but the pressure will increase each year as more and more people age into Medicare. This, mean, this means Plan G premiums will increase faster than those of plans with fewer guaranteed rights, such as the Plan N. The Plan N doesn't take sick people. Plan N does not require by law to take people that lose their Advantage plans, their group coverage, use their trial right, or the other uh, guaranteed issue rights that people use that are sick, okay? So, we got to look at the 80-20 rule. The impact of these rights on premiums can be generalized by the 80-20 rule. A small increase in the number of high-cost sick customers in the plan can cause a huge increase in the premium, change, change, premium charge to customers. All right? Now, let me So, in these situations, insurers must offer certain Medicare supplement plans, the Plan G. It's the most comprehensive plan. It's the most plan with a value, most value for... Uh, there's a few other old plans they can choose from that they're outdated, they're dinosaurs. People are going to go straight to the Plan G. They can't go to the Plan N, which is almost identical to the Plan G, the Plan N. So... In these situations, certain Medicare supplement plans, the Plan G, without the ability to screen for high-cost chronic health conditions, they can't screen for it, medically underwrite, the portion of customers granted these rights is small, but the impact on the health plan is significant, all right? The other thing, too, is this. As of 2020, Plan G offers the most comprehensive coverage. So let's think about this. Back in before 2020, customers who preferred comprehensive coverage and no-cost sharing purchased Plan F. 
Most customers who prefer to lower premium some out-of-pocket costs purchase the Plan G or the Plan N. So that all changed in 2020. Customers who pref- sick people new to Medicare that want the most con- comprehensive coverage, they're going to go with the Plan G. Most customers who prefer a low premium and additional cost sharing prefer the Plan N. Typically, customers who anticipate frequent physician visits tend to gravitate towards, gravitate towards the comprehensive Plan G. Customers who are relatively healthy and anticipate infrequent physician visits tend to gravitate to the lower premium Plan N. All right? And then it says, over time, this purchasing divide impacts the health care expenses paid by the underlying plan. Higher cost Plan G customers have higher premiums and lower plan and customers have lower premiums. The impact is gradual because the selection process based on health status between Plan G and Plan N is limited to newly eligible customers. Okay, guys, so we know the Plan F is not the way to go. Older, sicker group of people, it does pay everything Medicare doesn't. And if you were if you were under if you were under 65 as of January 1st, 2020, you can't even get the Plan F. If you have the Plan F, call me. Older, sick group of people, for years they had to take the sick, sick, sick folks that used their guaranteed issue right. No, we just talked about the Plan G. Because of the macro law on January 1st of 2020, the Plan G must absorb the high costs of a small pool of sick people that guarantee their guaranteed issue rights. So the Plan G, the only difference between the Plan G and the Plan F is that 233 Part B deductible. With the Plan N, you also have to pay that annual 233 deductible. But there's a little thing right here called excess charges. Now, excess charges are Medicare Part B excess charges. It's when a doctor that doesn't accept Medicare charges more than the Medicare approved fee schedule. And they can charge up to 15% above the Medicare fee schedule. So just as an example, you decided to go to a clinic that doesn't accept Medicare assignment. The doctor could impose a Medicare Part B excess charge of 15% on top of the $100 charge for the uh, echocardiogram. So instead of $100, you're going to pay $115. Here's the thing, guys. In my 11 years of strictly and solely dealing with Medicare, being a Medicare advocate, I've never seen it. It's never come into play. That's because 96% of all doctors accept Medicare. And you know what? Here's an easy fix. If you're not sure if your doctor accepts Medicare, Go to www.medicare.gov, this this link right here. Type in your doctor's name. The Medicare will tell you whether or not he accepts assignment. But again, doesn't come into play. Uh, and we can, we can take precautions necessary to make sure you don't go to a doctor that doesn't accept Medicare. Only other little thing is, like I said earlier, plan N, when you go to a doctor, doesn't matter what kind of doctor it is, you're going to pay between $0 and $20 copay. That's good. You know why? Because healthy people turning 65, they like the lower premium. They don't care about a zero to $20 copay. They go once or twice or three times a year. No big deal. And you have a $50 emergency room copay. That's the only difference. They're virtually the same coverage. The only difference is plan N premiums are lower, but you're not on Medicare just for today. You're on Medicare the rest of your life. And that independent study I talked about earlier states it clearly. Insurance companies are calling me saying, you don't want to put your guys in the Plan G. Our rates are going to be going up 12, 13, 14% next year. So if you want to keep your clients, put them in the Plan N. There's two reasons why agents put you in the Plan G. One is just that they're ignorant. They have no clue what, uh, what we're talking about here today. And the other reason is they know the Plan G is a higher premium and they get paid a higher commission. And guess what? If you get sick, you cannot go back. You can't change Medicare supplement plans. You're stuck for life. So would you rather be on a Medicare supplement if you get sick that's got very low projected rate increases? Or would you rather be on Medicare supplement plan G that's for to uh, accept sick people that use a guaranteed right issue? You know, the choice is yours. But again, I'm looking out for you, not just today, but I'm looking out for you for the next 10, 20 years. I'm looking at your future rate uh, increases. That's the number one danger to getting a Medicare supplement. So, you know, I've got people that come in and tell me, I just want the plan G because my neighbor 
has it, and they said it was good. Well, you know what? I've actually said, all right, well, good luck. Go do business with your other agent because I, I just, you know, you're coming to me for help and for expertise and for years of experience. So when it comes to Medicare, there's two things I do really well. I'm great at Medicare, pretty good at basketball too. I, spe I still beat my 17-year-old uh, son. Uh, he's never beat me yet. So I'm pretty good at that, pretty good at Medicare. Those two things I'm going to stick to and do well at. So anyway, this is Chris Dewey with May River Medicare. I hope you enjoyed the Medicare Advantage versus Medicare supplement and which supplement to pick. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.